morning, everybody. I hope everybody's set up to have a healthy, happy, and productive day today. We're back after our little sojourn back to DC to get some laundry and some supplies. We've got a few things to tie up here outside before we start working inside. And so for today, I'm gonna walk you through what I've got left. You've probably already seen some of the things that I've been working on in terms of the wood and the backyard, but uh, I'm gonna show you what I got to finish off with that. This is the platform of the deck, the carpeted deck that was hanging off the end of our cabin when we bought it. It was this hilarious little little room back there made of uh, plywood in this uh, carpeted platform with screens for windows. It was basically also made for hobbits. We pulled it off. I don't know why they saved it. They didn't just, just junk it. I think maybe they thought we'd try to use it again, but uh, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna break it up and uh, take it to the dump. But first I gotta pull it out with my truck. And in this yard, we've got stones left over from holding tarps on our uh, defunct wood piles. Uh, I'm gonna have to move all that first. I think this is gonna be done in two moves. I think I gotta move this this way first and then this way. So I gotta get my truck back here past all these rocks and uh, do a little maneuvering. And of course, we've got this pile. Uh, this has been looking over my shoulder for the last couple weeks that we've been here. So I'm finally gonna have to knock it out and finish it up this week so we can get inside and start working on the kitchen and the hallway. The war against the carpenter bee rages on. At a suggestion from our friends at Log and Timber Solutions, we'll link it down below. Um, we're using this dry on powder, which is basically a bug killer, like an insecticide. And we're gonna puff it in all of the holes that the carpenter bees have made in the house. And then if they come in contact with it, it they will die. And then once we're sure that they're not in the holes anymore, I think one just flew by. <laughs> Uh, then we will patch up the holes. And we're also gonna treat the wood this year um, so they stop like burrowing into it or chewing into it and destroying our logs. So there's a many, many step process to this. But the first one is puffing this powder into the holes. So it's kind of hard to control. So just doing it really gently, trying to get, oop, well, there you go. A lot of dust in the hole. They said you could, like, basically put it through a sieve to try to make it like more powdery, but um, we'll see how we do. So I have stuff in here, here, here. That's a huge one that they're in all the time. I try to do some smaller ones. Um, so this is round one, carpenter bees. Round two, carpenter bees. So we already sprayed the dry on everywhere and all the holes, and now we're gonna hang these traps. Um, so this is our second step this year for dealing with the carpenter bees and trying to trap them and keep them from eating us out of house and home, literally. So they only like a sunny side of the house. So we're going to hang these over here. There we go. Done. So they like it when it's sunny. I don't know why. That's how they are. So we have one there. We have a lot of wasps and stuff, so hopefully we'll catch some. There's some like sweet tea in there. And then we have one like hay on the side of the house. Yeah, we'll see what we catch. Hopefully we'll catch some. Catch you. Okay, so we're really serious about carpenter bees. So we've done the dry on powder. We're going to treat the logs at some point, but you're not seeing that now. We have hung the carpenter bee traps and now this. Phase three. Phase three or part three of a many part plan to get rid of them. So carpenter bees hate wasps. Um, and actually this is great because other wasps hate to be where wasps are. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's like one trying to attack Gabe right now. So um, we have these traps. We bought them last year. And if you look, there's still one right underneath the porch here. So they're made of wax paper, it's kind of waxy, but they like can't really get wet. Uh, so under the porch is a great place for them. Um, they're just little paper lanterns that look like little wasps nests. So we had three last year and I didn't secure them with nails. I just kind of like made a little loop and um, stuck them on the porch. This time I'm gonna secure them with nails so they don't fly away. And if they don't fly away, they'll probably be here all year and next year. So this is how they work. They come in a flat pack of three. And we'll put the link below 
this on Amazon. You pull it out like that. It has a little metal piece. You feed it down into the bottom. And then you just pull it so that it's taut through these little circles. There you go. Perfect. We just need to fix that one over there. It just looks a little low. You aren't wearing any pants. Well, I'm on this side of the camera. <laughs> All right. That's like the whole benefit of this whole period is this. <laughs> You don't have to wear pants, like, every day. In quarantine, in your house, no pants. I think I've worn pants every day in quarantine. Yeah, you're a square. <laughs> okay. Finally got to what I planned to do today, not washing the bathroom and not taking care of carpenter bees and not setting up traps and not putting up wasp nests. But I did all those things. I'm lime washing, finishing this chink line down here that we had done. Uh, kind of at the last point, I have to do some touch-up over there, touch-up downstairs. That's what I'm up to. You know what else you didn't do today? Wear no pants. Mm. <laughs> I know you so well. Today, by necessity, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So I've got my chainsaw chain off and it needs to be sharpened with the grinder. It's just dulling out so fast that I can't really cut through any of this really thick ash. So. We're gonna go move some rocks. Sounds like fun. But uh, we've got uh, this whole field right here. I need to get a truck back here. We've got a little platform, this goofy little uh, thing that used to be on our back porch. It's in an overgrown part that's about to become a lot more overgrown as things grown for the spring. So I'm gonna have to try to get my truck back here and drag it out. I brought some, um, I don't know, what is it? Three quarters inch chain from my uh, training supplies, something I used to work out. Um, and uh, I'm gonna hook that up to the platform, try to drag it out, but I gotta get these rocks out of the way. A while back, I heard a podcast with Ben Greenfield and Paul Check talking about a rock garden uh, that Paul Check has on his land where he's got a ton of rocks in a cleared out space and they would just move them around from place to place, build like impromptu rock sculptures and stuff like that, just as way to get outside and, and do some exercise and some weightlifting without actually getting into a gym and lifting weights indoors. And I really like the idea and I just so happen to have my own rock garden. Nothing too great or too artistic or creative. Uh, in my defense, the, the one I was working on, it did fall down. But uh, I have to imagine, you know, uh, something from the conversation that podcast I mentioned with uh, Ben Greenfield and Paul Check, there was a meditative aspect to it that kicks in right away. It's very mind clearing and kind of relaxing where you just, all you're thinking about is where does this stone go? And oh, let me get that stone. And you're just moving around and combined with the physical exertion and just the exercise parts, really, really cool. And it's actually a lot more fun than just like three sets of five, you know. But uh, I don't know, that was pretty cool. Now I'm just uh, trying to get all of the, uh, anything sharp that could puncture my tires. I kind of did a sweep for that, that's all good. And uh, let's try to move that platform.
So I used ratchet straps to try to hook up the truck to the platform and we'll see how that works. I thought I'd try that just because it's faster and easier than using the chain. Um, but we have the chain if we need it. And uh, we'll give this a shot. I got hooked up in two spots here and that's hooked up to the frame of my truck. So let's try to pull this sucker forward. Oh, <laughs> figures. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Just pulled off the plank. I'm gonna try to drill a couple holes and try again. <laughs> Victory is so sweet. That was kind of fun. Just kind of break stuff up with a sledgehammer, swinging out around, busting stuff up. It's kind of cool. But here it is. It's all broken down. I got some, I think, useful lumber back there. I'm gonna try to see if it's worth the juice, is worth the squeeze trying to get those nails out. But, uh, <sighs> all right, that's done. That's good. This is the end of our day. This is how we've been doing it. These huh. daily walks. It's been so nice. Look. Ah. <laughs> ah, look at that. Just it looks tiny on film, but it's beautiful. Anyway, so this is a day in the life. This is a day in the life. What is it? Day in the life? Day in the life? <laughs> this is a day in the life. <laughs> This is a day in the life of us during the lockdown. There's no need to distance yourself from the like button and subscribe and we could be friends from afar and everything's gonna be just fine. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.